one thing that the experimental biologist hates to hear from the biostatistician is you collected the wrong data or you did the wrong experiment. And that can be very frustrating because as an experimental biologist, we often feel like when we're at the bench, we're doing everything as precisely as we can and we've set up our experiment to perfectly address our research question. But once we collect all the data and then we go to actually tests or we try to extract some meaning out of that data set to address our original question, we might actually find that the data that we collected or the way that we collected it or the level of replication doesn't actually suit the statistical testing that we're trying to use. The controversy might be if somebody takes some data set and they keep throwing different statistical tests at it until they get a significance value that says, oh, this is real. And that's where you have to be very careful. I think that that's completely unnecessary. It's more about what was the design of this experiment and what are the data that I'm measuring because there are actually few ways, not a whole menu of options, about how to handle those data after you've acquired them. But the sooner that you think about um, more analytically how you're going to carry your data analysis forward, uh, the better you're going to be prepared to sort of head off some of these issues. So if you are your own internal biostatistician asking yourself the question, Am I collecting the right data? Am I doing the right experiment to match this particular method of analysis? You're going to save yourself a lot of headache later. There's lots of different types of data that you can collect within an experiment. And you can categorize them in lots of different ways. So there's qualitative data, right? This is just observations that you can write, you know, sentence or a paragraph. It's mostly descriptive. Those are useful in getting broad generalizations about different conditions, um, but it's hard to extract any quantitative meaning from them. Categorical data is where you have a very limited set of discrete categories that your observations can fall into. So hair color is one, like you can either be brown hair, blonde hair, red hair, or other variations thereof, but there are discrete categories within there. They're not numbers. Contrast qualitative data with quantitative data. So this is where you have hard numbers that are associated with your observations or like hard values. And for quantitative data, you can have things like continuous data points, which is where the data will vary from some minimum to some maximum with all of the different values in between. So maybe you might go from, you know, temperature is like a continuous variable because you can have anything between you know, zero and whatever the maximum temperature in the universe is, um, and all the values in between. So within continuous data, there's also you know, percentages. Percentages like from zero to 100% may seem as though they are continuous, and they are, because in a lot of cases, you can occupy any value from zero to 100. But you can't go above 100, and you can't go below zero. So it's only continuous within a certain range. And that limitation, the floor and the ceiling on the data, can also impact how you conduct downstream analyses. One thing that I ask all of my students to do is to write down an experimental plan. So not just the methods of what they're going to do, because obviously you, all students sort of naturally do this anyway. But I think the part that's not intuitive is you know, how will you interpret that data? So you know, often I ask them, if this works, what do you expect to see? And what will happen if you see only a slight difference? Is that going to change how you collect this data? You know, is this going to change what you control for? Is this going to change, you know, um, you know how many data points you take? Is this going to change, um, you know, how you quantify, you know, what things you will quantify about this data? You know, and therefore it will need that information up front. This is where there's a huge amount of value in working with a statistician or a biostatistician and designing an experiment, but then talking with these individuals who are experts on the analysis end about, hey, here are my data, here's what this experiment looks like, please give me your advice or your opinion on the kinds of statistics that would be proper to use. So from a very technical standpoint, if you define very clearly what types of data you're dealing with, that will affect how you conduct downstream analyses of those data. So if you want to do any statistical tests to determine whether you're having any like 
uh, statistically significant effects uh, from your experimental treatments. You need to know precisely what types of data you're working with so you can use the proper statistical tests. In addition to that, um, knowing the types of data that you're getting out of an experiment will also help you derive new insight on a particular process. So you might go into an experiment thinking that something is categorical, yes or no, but in actuality it's actually more of a continuous variable and there's more shades of gray in between those two. So in my case with root branching, uh, when I have a root exposed to agar, you know, it would be very easy to say there are roots induced. Yes, there are roots. And then when the root is exposed to air, I could say, no, there are no roots induced. But that ignores any variation in between those two extremes. So you might have some low level of induction. You might have a, you know intermediate range of induction of root branches. But if you just treat it as categorical, you're throwing away all that nuance. So being aware of quantifying your data and you know, cataloging it in these different ways will help you capture more meaning within the same biological process.